12 volt batteries have such a wide range of uses. Take a look at this. My kids' power wheels. I've got it set up for radio. And we can use it for powering a refrigerator. This is another video in the preparedness series for DIY battery builds. You can see the headway batteries are what we typically use here, but today we're going to go with some 25 amp hour batteries. Let's jump right into it. To get started with a battery build, we're going to do a top charge. In this case, we're looking at a single cell hooked up to a, a charger at uh, 3.65 volts. Uh, you'll see the charger is not quite at 3.65, but if you measure the output of the charger, um, just make sure it's 3.65 volts uh, and then hook it up to your battery. Uh, wait for that to go to zero amps, which indicates that the battery has absorbed all the 3.65 volts uh, that it can, and it should be at 3.65 volts. Another way you can charge your batteries up, you know, take all of the batteries you're going to use for your pack, put them in parallel, and charge them at 3.65 volts. It'll take longer, but you don't have to keep switching the batteries out if you have a single charger, and you can ensure that all the batteries are at the same voltage when it finishes. So you'll see here we just attach the positive to the positive side, the negative to the negative side, and you wait. When your cells are all the way charged up, you'll want to put them into their uh, series configuration to achieve your 12 volt battery in this case, where we have positive to negative for each of the cells, leaving an open positive and negative cell for the terminals uh, for the BMS, which I'm connecting here. Uh, you'll see we're putting the negative uh, connection on from the BMS to that negative terminal on the battery pack. Make sure your crimps are good. In this case, we're using copper terminals. Uh, they're very good for crimping uh, by hand. They don't require any special tools and uh, I have not had one of these come loose on me. You can also see that I've attached some tape around the outside of the batteries to hold them together. This is not just your average tape. This is tape designed for battery builds. It does not flex under heat. It's not like electrical tape that uh, won't really stay together and leaves that gummy residue. Very good tape. Uh, pick this one up from uh, batteryhookup.com along with the battery cells, the BMS, everything pretty much you see there in the, in the build. As you can see here, we're going to need a, a few of small ring terminals for the sensor leads that uh, attach to the BMS. You're going to need a large terminal for the negative to the BMS and you'll need some kind of wire with some kind of connections uh, for the actual outside of the battery, whether that's Anderson's or any other type of connection. You'll need some crimpers, you'll need some wire strippers, uh, tape obviously. Um, in this case, the battery cells did not ship with the bus bars or the, uh, the nuts that go on there. Uh, I had to order those bus bars to ensure that you have the right size bus bars for the cells that you're using, you'll want to make sure that you measure the distance between the terminals uh, when you have the battery in the appropriate configuration. They could be off center a little bit depending on where you put them. So anyway, uh, these were measured and I ordered a set off of Amazon, fit perfectly, and I just happened to have some of these nuts laying around to uh, fit the, the terminals. As you can see here, I'm trimming the sensor leads from the BMS and applying the uh, ring terminals to those sensor leads. These will get attached to the uh, terminals in the appropriate order, starting with the black wire in, on this lead set that goes to the first negative. And so that first negative is also where the blue wire gets connected, which is your main negative wire for the battery pack. These wire strippers make life real easy for you, but you don't have to use anything fancy. Just make sure that you have something that'll clean the extract the insulation from the wire and then make sure that your crimpers are of pretty good quality something you can get a good grip on there uh, these crimps are not copper they're a little more difficult to get in place and the wires are very small so typically I'll solder these in place but I was able to get a good crimp on these uh, and tested a little bit of uh, pressure on them to make sure they don't come loose and you'll simply just unscrew the nut that's on the terminal for whichever uh, sensor wire we're working with and place it under that nut. Make sure that the wire that goes to the BMS uh, is directly on top of the bus bar if there's a bus bar on that terminal and then the sensor wire on top of that. You want the sensor wire to be the last one you put on before the nut gets applied. So in order again, uh, you'll want to make sure that you have the terminal, the bus bar, the any other wires for power, 
and then the sensor wire. This BMS has two wires connected to the main negative. Because of the 100 amp discharge capabilities of this BMS, I'm going to utilize one of those uh, wires each to uh, a set of Andersons so that you'll have um, divided power among your uh, devices that you're going to uh, utilize on this battery. In this case, I chose to use some unique heat shrink style connectors that have integrated solder in them. It takes some time with this heat gun to actually get them to uh, shrink down around the wire and then for the solder to melt on. But as you can see here in the finished product, it works pretty darn well. I uh, have never had a problem with these coming loose or uh, getting too hot uh, with any kind of uh, high discharge. The red wires here are the positive leads that are going to go to the Anderson connectors and they'll terminate on the positive uh, terminal that's on the last cell here on the battery pack. I'm using copper terminals again uh, because like I said they're easy to crimp, they hold really well, um, highly recommend those for your main terminals. If you're interested in the crimp tool I'm using here, it's from Klein Tools comes in handy. It's a very basic, but it's a very quality product. I'd probably say the most difficult part of the battery build is getting these smaller terminals onto these very small sensor wires. Uh, you have to be very careful uh, putting them on and make sure that your crimps are very tight uh, because there's not much wire to grab onto. So take your time with that process. Sometimes uh, it will be uh, better or beneficial to you to add some solder to the end of those connections and make sure they're solid. At this point we need to rearrange some wires and make sure that they're routed properly before we make any more connections. Uh, this red wire is the last sensor wire so I've added the first one and we're going to move to the last one here. It's going to attach along with the positive wire at the end of the series here. You want to double check those crimps on those small terminals again so here's that second crimp making sure it's extremely tight. Then you give it a little tug, make sure it's good. Now, I want to point out that we're connecting the positive wires to the battery, and we've got the negative wires connected to the battery through the BMS. So at this point, you need to realize that the wires that are coming off of the battery that are attached there at the end are hot. You've got a 12 volt uh, semi-high current uh, right there at the end of those wires. So. Make sure they don't touch to create some kind of short and make sure they're not touching any metal objects. All right, moving on to the next sensor wire. It's going to be the second one, which is right after the black one. In this case, that is going to be on the positive of the first cell. So you have the black one that goes to the negative of the first cell and the first white one goes to the first positive of the first cell. Get that attached nice and firmly. I'm not going to tighten anything down just yet. Let's measure out the next one. This is the uh, third wire. It's going to go to the positive of the second cell. Let's strip the wire insulation off, get that crimp on there, double check it, and let's just get that in place. Make sure no wires are, are crossing or anywhere they're going to get pinched. And then attach it. The next one's going to go to the positive of the third cell. You'll see we're routing the wire, make sure it's the right length before we cut it. Give it a little trim and add that little terminal onto the end very carefully. You'll notice I gave myself a little bit of extra wire here just in case I needed to move it around. I didn't want to cut it too short. It's a lot easier to cut more off later than it is to add wire. All right, now we've got all the sensor wires attached, and let's see what we're going to do at the end of these terminals. Remember, we need to disconnect that negative before we continue. We don't want to create any kind of short or working on those crimps. Let's get that out of the way. And now we can strip these off and add some Andersons. Sorry about the focus on this part of the video. I was trying to get an up close so you could see the detail, but the camera did not cooperate. 
But all you have to do is crimp on the Anderson connector, which is the metal part, and then snap on the plastic part of the Anderson connector and make sure they connect together. Make sure you got them lined up properly. Slide them together and you're all set. You'll notice I added a barrel connector to the battery. That's for an input of solar um, or a wall plug to charge the battery at a very low amperage. Now let's check out the Bluetooth adapter. It comes in a package with two different wires. I believe the, some of the BMSs have a larger uh, JST connector. This, in this case, we had to use the, the smaller of the two to connect to the BMS. We'll plug in the wire to the board first, and then the other end of the wire will plug right into the Bluetooth adapter. This Bluetooth adapter is very small and doesn't have any indicators on it other than a blue flashing light that will come on when you try to connect. Speaking of connecting, let's go ahead and give it a try and make sure everything looks good. Looks like the voltages on the battery cells are correct and the total voltage looks good. We'll have to change some parameters in the phone app in order to set the total capacity of the battery. And let's go ahead and do that now. When you open the app, you'll see a list of all the different devices you can connect to with the Bluetooth. Select the one you're working on to get the dashboard, which will show you all the battery information. This is the dashboard and then you'll select your parameter settings in order to configure the charge over voltage, the under voltage, the cell uh, over voltage and under voltage and so forth. Um, in this case each of these parameters are already set exactly where they need to be. We want a 3.65 over voltage, 3.5 release on that over voltage, about a two second release time, you have your under voltage of 2.5, which is perfect. Uh, under voltage release as it charges back up, 2.8, about a two second release time. Uh, pack over voltage, 14.6, is perfect as well. I'm not going to go through each of these because they're all pretty much where they need to be for a lithium iron phosphate battery of this type. And we'll move on to the next set of items here. But I just wanted to give you a chance to take a look at how many different items you can configure in this BMS. It's incredible. Here's a look at the dashboard. shows our total uh, capacity or total in and out amps and the cell voltages. At this point, we just need to mount the Bluetooth in its final position. Make sure that the cables are the right length. Make sure they're routed properly. Make sure this thing doesn't get damaged. I had some of this plastic board laying around that will heat uh, nicely and bend into whatever shape you want. So I created a little cap for this battery pack that just slips on and I'll tape it into place so it doesn't move around. The end of the battery pack that has the exposed metal from the cells, I'm going to cover up with some fish tape. It's just basically adhesive paper uh, which will protect those metal components from being exposed. To ensure that they're symmetric, I'm going to add that same tape to the side that I have the plastic cap. The final step is to wrap this thing up, quite literally. We're going to cut some shrink wrap that is very large. You can order this also from batteryhookup.com. It slips right over the battery and you simply use a heat gun, heat source to allow it to shrink. Uh, be careful when this stuff shrinks all the way. Um, it will no longer shrink. It will literally melt, creating holes in your product. So uh, to avoid having to do it over again, make sure that you're moving the heat source quickly, evenly across the surface and uh, go slow with this process. And here's the final product. It measures about eight inches by five and a half inches by three inches deep. Uh, this is a perfect size to fit in one of the smaller ammo cans if you want to take it a step further and build a custom battery box that has particular types of outlets on it. Um, or if you have a particular application that this needs to fit in, there are your measurements. And then I hooked it up to the bench to power my ICOM 5100 and the Yaesu FTDX10. And of course it performed without issue. If you have any questions about this battery build or any other types of lithium iron phosphate projects, uh, leave a comment below and I'll see if I can get back to you with a response. Please like and subscribe, it really helps out the channel. Thanks for watching.